All right, the 12K PV, a lot of you guys have been asking about it. I've had it running, doing some different testing. And basically in this video, I'm just gonna do a little walk through of this, show you some of the wiring, and then we'll see if we can overload this thing real quick. Just to show you it can be done, even though this thing has been great for overloads, you know, I've definitely ran over 8K for like 10 minutes before, 10 or 15 minutes, I'm not sure exactly what it was, before the thing kicked out. We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and I'll show you how my connections are made. And right now, yes, this thing is run. It's uh, past four o'clock in the evening. So I only have uh, 584 watts of solar coming in right now. I just got the one MPPT hooked up. I don't have my other one hooked up yet. Still got a lot of work to do on this because I got to hook up the ones on my shed on here and do a couple more things to it, of course, you know, to get everything finished off. But my battery percentage right now is 87%. I got 1,090 watts going out because I have this system charging some batteries I got on the other side of the building over here. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through the wiring real quick and then we'll do some testing. So basically I'm going to show you how I have everything hooked up. It's definitely not complicated at all. You know, you follow the manual, you know, you're definitely not going to have a problem. Let's go ahead and get another little light in here. So basically what we got is we got our communication cable. It just goes to BATCOM, you know, that's going to go right on top of your battery. And we have the EG4 indoor uh, Power Pro battery. You know, the thing's been working great. Basically, this can communication, just hook it up. And you don't really have to do anything. It just works. So, bam, right there is where it's going to be hooked up. You got your, your PV inputs. So, I got PV1 right here. You know, the positive and a negative PV1. You know, here on the left. But PV1 does have a dual. So, you can put one on either side. You know, as long as it doesn't go over to maximum amperage, which I think might be like 25 amps or something like that. Then you have number two, the same way, you know, you have four inputs, but you can just use two of them. Right now, like I said, all I got is the one MPPT hooked up. So you can probably see it right here on the left, positive and negative. And of course, you're going to have your battery, your main battery breaker, 250 amp. You're going to have your main battery lows, you know, positive on the left, negative here on the right. You know, just go ahead and hook those up. Make sure you torque them per the spec. Then if you want to have a generator hookup, you're going to have a breaker right here for a generator, L1 and L2. Of course, I don't have a generator on here right now, but it's an option that you have, you know, if you got a generator. My load breaker, which I basically got going to my load panel over here. I got my L1 and L2 hooked up, and then I got my neutral hooked up, you know, and I do have power on this thing, so I need to make sure I ain't just touching everything in here, but I am touching the breakers. And then if you have grid input, of course, I don't have any grid hooked up. So, you know, I'm not worried about that right now, but some of you guys, a 12K unit is definitely going to work to me best on an on-grid kind of situation because of all the features this unit has and all the things it can do. But if you're like me and you want to use the off-grid, you can, especially with the surge capacity this thing. The surge capacity is great. There's a bunch of videos out there testing that, and you can see them. So if you have a lot of equipment and you're running stuff off grid and you need high surge capabilities when you're building stuff, you know, using compressors, that kind of things, well pumps, you know, this unit is going to work well for you. Even if you're not using a grid interact features, the indoor uh, uh, conduit box or whatever, a smaller one to go with the indoor battery. But this is the outdoor Ranger one, I think. Yeah, because I got a rubber gasket and the door on it. But as you see, it makes it easy to do the wiring. Let me back this up a little bit so you can actually see in there. So it makes it easy to do the wiring. Of course, I had this and the conduit box before I had the battery. So I just had the battery sitting on the ground. I got a little gap down here. That way I can hook up other things because I'm using this for a test setup. I can test other batteries and stuff. And this is going to be my test building. Even though this is going to be running the building, it's going to be used for test purposes too. So I may never put it all the way up to the bottom of the conduit box. We'll just have to see. But as you can see, you got plenty of room in here for your wiring. And basically over here, I have a load center that I put in for the building. You know, put a 100 amp breaker in here. And this is where I got my load from my inverter coming into the load right here. And you can put all your loads. I got a 50 amp breaker going to my EV charger. And I got two 20 amp breakers going to these uh, plugs right here to either side. So I can plug different things up for testing to get uh, as much power out as possible. And I'm not using a 120 amp breaker, you know, for uh, multiple outlets. And I'll be putting more stuff in here when, once I get the light put in and the air conditioner that is still running on my little portable system over there. I'm going to hook that up over here as well. I just haven't had a chance. I'm just super busy. You know, you got to work, trying to make videos, trying to work on projects. There's always something going on. 
So haven't been able to accomplish the things I want to accomplish, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. Load center. Too easy. Your grounds, your neutrals, your L1s, your L2s. It's pretty simple. There's a lot of videos on that. I'm not an electrician, doesn't claim to be, but as long as you have everything properly grounded and following whatever codes you have, you know, you're going to be fine. One thing I do like about this is the screen seems to work. To me, it's a little better than that, that 18K. You know, I heard Will saying that in his video, but then once I got it and started testing it, it does seem to work better to me. You know, sometimes to me on the, 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 18k that my parents have if you get close to the corners and stuff like that sometimes it can be hard to touch some of those little spots or little buttons that you need to, to mash you know you have to kind of work at it just a little bit but this one seems to definitely work better see how easy that was to click the, for the settings and easy it was to click to the home you know it just it's like you're right on it so i don't know if there it's just an update i need to do on my parents or whatever but this one definitely seems to work well so right now the sun must have came back out. So we got 3,046 watts coming into the system right now. So let me go ahead and pull it up on the app so you can see it. Let's click on shed. Just clicked on it. 3,052 watts coming in. 3,052 watts. 1,094 watts coming out. 1,898 watts going into the battery. And the battery's at 88% state of charge. So with this array that I have at 4.12 in the afternoon, you know, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out where I built uh, the little ground mount, the solar pergola for $339 a deal. You know, you got to go check that video out if you haven't seen it. And I got 12 of the serious 415 watt panels up there. And as you can see right here, you know, 12 times 415, you know, that's 4,980 watts of panels. So at past four o'clock, you know, pulling in over 3,000 watts for basically a 4,900 watt uh, uh, system, that is not bad at all. So 30,052 divided by that 49, what was it, 4980 or something like that. So that's 61% efficiency here in the afternoon. And like I said, there's cloud cover going in and out. As you saw, it was 500 watts right when we started and then it went up to 3,000. So, you know, just the cloud cover and everything, just normal weather kind of days when you have solar, it's not always gonna be perfectly sunny. But after four o'clock, still getting 61% efficiency. Yeah, it is pretty good because it's nowhere near the middle of the day when you're going to get your best numbers, of course. So let's go ahead and get the EV charger started. And I can show you what kind of noise this thing is making. You know, you should be able to hear it on my microphone. And we'll show that it's going to be able to put out the 8,000 watts is rated for. Let's go ahead and go and do it. So bam, just got it started. And I start hearing some noise. I got right now it's got 7,600 watts coming out. Go ahead and get the app started again. You may be able to hear it right now. I'll try to get real close over here to the fans. So this is when the 12K or even the 18K start making any some noise is when you really ramp up the power. You know, when it's lower, when it's only a couple thousand watts, either going in for solar or coming out to your load, this thing is completely quiet. You can't hear it at all, which is awesome. You know, I definitely love that feature that it's not going to make a bunch of noise, except when it's working really hard. So right now it's working harder because it's got 7,669 watts coming out. Let's go ahead and refresh the app so you can see it on the app. As you can see, right here, got 7,670 watts coming out. We'll go ahead and move this over a little bit. So this thing will run pretty much indefinitely like this because it's less than the 8,000 watts. It's not going to hurt it with a surge capacity. But what we want to do is make this thing go over that capacity to see if we can kick it out. So let's go ahead and hook something else up. Of course, I have the EV charger going. And I have this little plug right here plugged up to a little battery charger over here that's charging some batteries up. That's why it's at 7,666 watts. But I think my car does maybe around 6,600. So I'm going to go ahead and grab something else, plug it up, and get it charging. All right, 7,691 watts coming out. Got another load here. Basically, I have a little um, shop back, a little tiny one. And we're going to plug it up. I got it sitting on the outside, and I got it on. So hopefully it's not making a bunch of noise. Very, of course, is making some noise right now. That's how it is. But let's go ahead and plug it up and see what we got. And as I heard the thing coming on, and we'll go ahead and refresh the app. See if we can get it to update. And I have the app over here so you can see it. 8,414 watts coming out. Right now, as you can see on the app, the time is 418. We're going to see how long this thing will run at 8,414 watts. You know, at some point it should kick out. Let me see if I can find the manual. I think it's about 10 minutes when you're above 
you know, the 8,000 watts, you know, continuously. I think after 10 minutes, the inverter will kick out. So we'll see what it does. All right. With that 8,414 watts, I'm going to hook up another solar generator, which may overload my plugs, but uh, we're going to try it anyway. Why not? It's only going to be temporary. We'll see if we get an overload. All right, let's see what we got. I don't know what I got this solar generator set at for input power, but I just plugged it up. We'll see how much it starts charging. Got about 300 watts coming in. So we're up to 8,778 watts so far. And the app just a little bit behind, so we're getting the app to update. Got 1,000 coming out of that. So 9,000 watts, over 9,000 watts, as you can see right here, coming out of this inverter. So way over the rating, 9,300 watts right now. 9,300. So, you know, definitely probably about over what the breaker can handle, but I'm only going to do it temporarily. 9,382 watts, as you can see right now. Crazy. So this thing, you know, definitely has some great uh, surge capabilities and uh, uh, overproduction capabilities, at least, you know. 9,382 watts. 93, so 421. I don't know what time I started, maybe 420. 9,382 watts coming at this thing right now. So we're only going to do this for maybe a minute or two just to see how it does. And it sounds like it may, yep, just kicked out. So... It may have ran for about a minute or 30 seconds or something like that with that 9300 coming out. And then, of course, the inverter is going to try to protect itself and turn itself off. Let's go ahead and plug, unplug that solar generator. So as you can see, you can run a, a load higher for a little while, you know, and it's going to be fine. But if you run it consistently like I was, you know, 9300 watts, then after whatever it was, maybe 30 seconds or a minute, Hey, it kicked itself out to protect the inverter. So it will do a lot more than it's rated for, which is awesome. And now it's 422. You'll probably see this inverter go ahead and kick back on, and it'll start running everything again without having to do anything. It should just restart. So 422, let's see how long it takes. And even with the output kicked out, still got the 2,800 uh, plus watts of solar coming in, and the battery's at 85%. So it's still charging the battery, even though it kicked out the load. And as you can see, the inverter is perfectly quiet with 2,800 watts of solar coming in. It's not making a sound. So dead quiet. I do have some sound meters, but, you know, I have other stuff running in the building that would probably make noise. Oh, it just kicked on. So it's 423. So after about a minute, it kicked back on. And we got power coming back out because I just heard the uh, vacuum kick on. And now the uh, EV charger should start ramping up. Now we're up to 8,123 watts. Let me get the app going so that you can actually see it. 8,300 watts. So this thing's going to restart back. If it overloads, you're outside working. You're like, I don't want to go reset this thing. It's automatically going to restart it on its own. You just take at least one of your loads and disconnect it that you had, and you're going to be fine. Or you can run the loads high for a little while, just depending on how high it is. If it's 8,300 range, it's probably like, 10 minutes but if it's over that 9300 that i was doing it must be like 30 seconds or a minute i don't know exactly what it was so then i look at the time exactly but it will run it for a little while so let's go ahead and disconnect this uh one load here so i disconnected my little shop back and now my load is down to 7600 so you better run this indefinitely at least until your batteries die if you don't have no solar coming in you guys know that but the little my little initial test of this 12k has been great now this is not the cheapest unit on the market if you don't need all these features you know you could be better off going with a 6000 xp but the things this thing will do it, it's just a lot more than a 6000 xp so you'll have a lot more options you know for the future if you have one of these units and the surge capabilities i think it's better on this than it is on the 6000 xp and I have three of the 6,000 XP's and I love them, you know, and I'm probably not going to ever get rid of them for sure because, I mean, I just don't see what else I'm going to need that those can do, at least for my setup right now, because that will put out 18,000 watts of load. You know, I'm only going to get 8,000 out of this or even the 18K, I'm only going to get 12 out of that. 
So I would need multiple of these units. And just for the price, you know, you may not want to do that. Now, if the budget is not a concern, you go with these units because they're a lot nicer. The warranty is going to be a lot longer. You know, these are made to last a lot longer than the 6,000 XP. Because the 6,000 XP can get dust and everything on the electronics. This unit is completely sealed. You can use it outdoors, indoors. So it just depends on what you want and where you're going to be installing the thing. So do I recommend the 12K or the 18K? Absolutely. These inverters have been awesome. I've had the 18K outside of my parents' house for months, and the thing just works. You know, no problem with it. My parents love it. Saving them money. You know, they have backup power during emergencies. So who would not like that? And definitely the way things are going now, you know, you better have some backup power. You better have some self-reliance at your house. Because if not, if the grid goes down, you never know what's going to happen. You know, storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever the case may be, you know, may not knock out power. Even if it's not directly right at your house, if it's just close by your house, you know, electrical power might go out from your lines. You know, it may be some kind of cyber attack or something crazy. You just never know what's going to happen because the world is just getting crazier and crazier. It's definitely not getting any better. So you better be able to take care of yourself at least for a short time. And remember, if you didn't see my last video with a serious panel uh, solar pergola build for $339, you might want to go check that out because I talked about in that video, if you make any purchases through my Secrets of Solar affiliate links for the month of September, you'll automatically be entered into a contest, basically to win a Life Power 4 battery. So basically all you gotta do is go make a purchase through my links, and one of you guys, whether 10, 20, 30 people make a purchase this month, hey, after this month is over, we'll be giving out a battery to one of you, you know, doing a little contest. So it's very good odds that you'll win a free, basically 12 or $1,300, whatever it is, battery, you know, to add to your system. And remember, if you like this kind of video, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button, and thanks for watching.